The concept of euthanasia is tricky for most people. It sometimes creates images of elderly men and women comfortably choosing that it is time to die. It is time for these misconceptions to end. Euthanasia affects everyone, not just the terminally ill. Families, children, and even infants are impacted by euthanasia. Resolve that the United States government should legalize euthanasia. Euthanasia is defined as a doctor's administration of drugs in order to kill his or her patient. Assisted suicide is when a second party provides the means for the suicidal person to kill themselves. Our opponents will argue that euthanasia and assisted suicide are one and the same. However, the administration of deadly doses of drugs on a voluntary basis can evolve into involuntary euthanasia. Already legal in three U.S. states and other areas of the world, assisted suicide, in theory, is inconsistent with its actual practice. Probable abuses in legalized euthanasia are too dangerous to ignore. Potential abuses in the administration of euthanasia include involuntary, ill-decided, and ill-advised death. Legalizing euthanasia with patient's consent has been proven to lead to involuntary euthanasia. The Netherlands and Belgium provide for euthanasia with the patient's consent. In a 2005 official report from the Dutch government, it was reported that 550 patients were actively killed by doctors without explicit request. Children and infants in the Netherlands and in Belgium are also assisted in dying, although they are incapable of giving consent to die. Doctors are making this most critical decision for them. With this evidence in mind, any plan providing for the legal administration of euthanasia would be undesirable. There is too much possibility for abuse for legal euthanasia to be beneficial overall. The affirmative team argued that euthanasia will only be provided to terminally ill patients in severe pain. Yet, in the first seven years of Oregon's implementation of its death with dignity law, none of the assisted suicides were due to physical pain. With legalized euthanasia, there is also a great risk for patients to choose euthanasia due to financial insecurity. They may feel they are too great a burden on their family financially and choose to be euthanized. In a Washington State Death with Dignity Act report, 23% of the study assisted suicide participants were concerned with being a burden on their family, friends, or caregivers. To legalize euthanasia is to pressure the terminally ill into choosing between themselves and burdening their loved ones. Legal euthanasia is the push these patients do not need to end their guilt and thus their lives. Though our opponents will argue for euthanasia to provide death with dignity, the provisions for euthanasia's administration are questionable. People are undeniably imperfect. Doctors are imperfect. They cannot possibly be given the responsibility of impartially determining whether a patient is ready to die. Religion, environment, and like factors influence doctors' beliefs on euthanasia and dying. It is not practical to expect them to objectively decide to assist in suicide. Additionally, the act of doctors contributing to patients' deaths violates the very purpose of their profession, to preserve life. To ask doctors to go against the very reason for their employment is unreasonable and altogether undesirable. There are far too many flaws in allowing physicians to determine life's end. If the U.S. government were to legalize assisted suicide, it would open the door for involuntary, unfair euthanasia. Serious consequences await a wrong decision regarding this issue. The most imperative aspect to understand is this. Right to die does not equate to right to euthanize. Thank you. Vote negative.